going to go um, pull up the chat on it. Hey, I'm McBee. I have Rick, and welcome to another edition of the Seller Stream. We got Foo Bricks with me again tonight. He's going to talk a bunch about how he's uh, doing a flip on a purchase that he got recently. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit, a little bit, just a little smidge about Black Friday. Um, I want to say hello to everybody who's in the chat right now viewing. Um, let me make sure this thing is set up and going properly. Yes, it is. all right. Good deal. Um, questions in the chat would be excellent to see. Um, basically, first question uh, is, what's the best way to sell bulk? And that's eBay. Just wash it, throw it in a bag, gallon size bag, throw it on eBay for 12 bucks. You know, it'll sell. Pick out the little pieces if you want to, but that's the best way to handle the bulk, in my opinion. Um, if you just want to do a quickie on it, and you're, yes, doing it by volume, you're, doing, yeah, you're doing it by volume because you're putting it in a gallon bag, so it's volume. Great example right here. Yep. That's you a can go further. Light. Yeah, you can go even further. If you really if you're a person who likes to sort, uh, especially if you sort well by color, sorting by color and selling it by pound is definitely a uh, a great way to do it. Another option, which is what I do, uh, is I donate it. So um, I put together a lot of brick. Uh, a lot of the brick goes to either my kids' school. Uh, one of the charities that I'm picking up and running. Um, but it's a good way. If you've got just trashy brick, you know, don't donate it. But if it's, uh, if it's, if, it, if you would use it and it's, it's decent, you don't see, uh, you see a better return in your, um, if you see a better return on your time by just donating it and being able to write that off and stuff like that, that's, it's a great option as well. You've got to remember that. With your businesses, um, you got to figure out a way to offset taxes one way or another. And one of the best ways to do that is to to donate. You doing that? Yeah, I agree. Donation is great. Lots of schools need it. I've actually had teachers approach me to buy, and I actually just gave them like half to order for free, so half off. Yeah. More or less covering my cost. Right. Right. Good deal. I, uh, I like a lot of fit. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to uh, have little big A slowly bring brick into school and just start dumping it in the classroom. I've already got the approval from the teacher. So. Let's see. You want to talk about your figs? Yeah, I just posted about Instagram. Some of you probably already saw it. I picked up a 114 Batman movie mini figs. Here's an empty pack. Two dollars each. Ended up with five full sets and fourteen extra. And you're able to take that and turn it pretty quickly for your uh, your balance, your your basically your uh, your benchmark. So you and I have different benchmarks on the investment side. We've talked about that off stream before. Where yes. I'm, I go and I'm on the long term. I go for three x. You do a lot, a lot of quick flipping of things. And your limit is sometimes shy of two X, but you also yep. don't have to hold it. You also are not, you're not holding it for a long time. That's true. And it also depends on how much work I have to do. Yeah. Parting out a fig versus selling a complete set of 20 is a lot less work. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, it's. And it's just a time thing for me. You know, I, I have a big part out queue that I haven't gotten to yet. So I'm just, when I find things that I can make a quick buck on, I'll probably do that until I get a part out queue back down. Now, are you going to start flipping more sets sealed as well? Yes. Of that? I'm, ar I'm already doing that now. It's quarter four Amazon. Um, I am about as fast as I can get them to Amazon. They're selling. So it's since I have, like I said, a massive part out queue is just going to sit around anyway. I may as well take what I can get now and reinvest it later. Yeah, it is 3X. definitely the season to be doing that. Yeah. And you were lucky enough to get in on Amazon before they had all of the rules and regulations with regards to who could sell what brand name thing. So you sort of, yeah, you scored. How did you skirt in there again? I got lucky. Um, 
couple of years ago, Amazon blocked anyone off the street from selling Lego as a brand. So anything that's branded by Lego on Amazon, you have to have approval. And I lucked out by selling a Mindstorms battery three years ago. And because I sold one item as a Lego item, I was grandfathered into the old system. Nice. Nice. That's quality right there. That's just pure luck. <laughs> that's, that's such quality right there. <laughs> And we've talked about some of the non-Lego things you sell as well. And I don't want to get into that because those are great little niche items that you found. But uh, you're able to just take regular things that you would most people would just shake their head at as to why. And quick flip that fast and for a good price. So hats off to you. Yeah, it's pretty convenient. You just throw everything in a box and send it where Amazon tells you to send it. And they handle the rest. Beautiful. That's true of Lego and non-Lego. I just sent in some Oreos, for example. <laughs> so, Oreos? Yeah. So the, there's no spoilage type of thing, or you don't have to worry about the cookies breaking up? or. Yeah, there's a lot of packing requirements, and it has to be at least 95 days away from expiration. But um, I won't get into details, but yes, yeah, so the new flavored Oreos that they don't have everywhere. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. No, no, that's <laughs> that's that's good to know. Good to know. Like that type of stuff. It's very yep. outside the box. Yeah. So if they, since I'm in Pennsylvania, if they have some pretzel flavored Oreo or whatever. Yep. There you go. Yeah. And um, we have a question in the chat. Um, shipping Bricklink orders international. What's the best way to do this? I guess it depends on where you're shipping from. For the United States, I do it through PayPal personally. Yes, definitely. Uh, PayPal's free service. Um, doesn't really make a lot of sense to get one of the alternate um, shipping companies unless you're shipping out a lot. Um, I'm getting to the point right now where I'm pondering it, but that's just because of the seasonalness of my sales. Yeah, speaking of sales, I've been pretty slow lately as far as number of orders. I've had three orders north of $50 in the past two weeks. So that's, you know, I'll take that versus twenty ten dollars orders. Yeah. But um, it's just surprisingly slow com you know, compared to last year this time. That's probably my fault. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but for a good reason. I've got so how did your sales go, by the way, for last weekend? Um, Bigger than you expected, smaller? Well, no, I actually... I we didn't have time to do the sale. So what I did is uh, there was a lot of veterans in active duty that knew it was going to happen. They had contacted me. I gave them their own little private sale. Gotcha. So, coupons. Yeah. Just gave them coupons, let them buy what they want and basically gave them, I think it was 46% off their charges. So speaking of coupons, now that Bricklink has instant checkout, I believe they should also allow us to have coupon codes. Yes, and that's been brought up before. Um, clutch that's pretty easy. Dollar wants to do that, and I and I tried to do that with a point because I knew that there was way, way, way back in the beginning with the seller stream, I knew that there was people from uh, the management or administrative staff from Bricklink and from Brick Owl watching the show. Um, so I had made it a point where we had created a seller stream specific Brick Owl coupon to try to. Uh, edge them into doing it they're working on seller tools and stuff like that i'm hoping that uh i'll be allowed to beta some of them but uh, or at least input some information that'd be great though because i would like to have instant coupons as well and coupon codes for different things yep and with with part of my thing i send out cards with every order and I'd love to have a coupon code that I can implement on, on both sides. Yeah. And, and it'll just knock it off their order. Because instant checkout, there's no way, aside from giving them a partial refund, to fulfill my promise of 5% off if you mention the card. Right. And it's difficult for people to even find the coupon when they're checking out. I, I actually think that Bricklink should auto-apply uh, best coupon available. And yes. And and make it a point to tell the person that they did this. Like we select, we pre-selected this coupon for you. you. You do you have zero other coupons available, or you know you have this many coupons available, so the people know that. Um, I might hurt me a little bit, but 
don't know. I feel a little wonky when um, people place orders and don't use coupons. I know that um, some of my corporate clients don't use coupons specifically because they enjoy they're enjoying the service aspect of it more than the price aspect of it. They could a lot of times give two shits about the price of it. They like the, the quick return on it. They like the fact that um, they know that I'm going to get it to uh, the post office quickly for them. So they get their stuff. Yep. And so. I just checked cause I was curious. I wish I could create a coupon for free shipping. You can on brick owl, not on Bricklink. That's what I was wanting on Bricklink because I get orders from the local lug and I just have to refund them their shipping because I have instant checkout. There's no way for me to decipher their order ahead of time. Yeah. But if I could give them a coupon code, then they'd be able to use it and not ship me off. Right. And then you're going to want groups, though. You're going to want to yeah. be able to put uh, different buyers into different groups to auto apply certain features to them. I mean, that's what I would want if I had my own custom software. And OBFD just said in the chat, he he's to be honest, he has no idea how to add coupons to his order from stores. It's at the it's at the bottom of it. Um, it's, it's where you're setting um, the amount you're going to pay in, or the, the the currency that you're going to pay in, stuff like that. It's at the very bottom of that, where the and the total, and you just apply the coupon at the last second, and it's it should be auto done. Yep, Hoosier, that's right. There's a box in the checkout to add coupon as well. I remember seeing that last time I placed a Brickling quarter. Um, and we got Renegade Bricks. At what point did you see your lot count slow down? Every time we upload sets, we're adding 20 plus lots. Yeah, it's pretty shoot. I mean, there's a lot of different Lego pieces out there. And it's going to take you a while to build up that many unique lots. Yeah, um, if you're constantly, and I, Renegade's out of my old lug, C lug, what's going on? Um, what uh, if you're if you continually do the same themes, especially the same years over, you're not going to get a lot of new stuff yeah. in there, unless it's superheroes, which really don't have one unifying thing. Um, but to give my personal experience, answer his question. I currently have under parts three thousand two hundred nine lots in my store, and I'm still constantly adding tons of new lots, no matter what I part out. Yeah, unless it's a set I've already parted out before. I'm always adding north of 20 lots, probably north of 50, depending on how big the set is. I'm, a, I mean, I'm adding the brick box back in that I've done already, and uh, even with with each bag, I'm still getting 10 new lots. So that's good. And, and well, I'm also paying attention to since I'm doing everything through um, through brick stock, I uh, I don't have to, or I can I can look to see how many I'm putting in. Uh, you know, how many, basically, like, if, if I'm looking at like, just the yellow spectrum, when I was putting in some of those bricks, I was looking at it, and I, if I had, you know, the same amount or more of uh, that element in the store already, I wasn't selling it for six months average. I was taking it down a little bit. Um, if it were something that was a very usable item that I still had, let's say, 20% of, um, meaning that I sold a lot more than that because I had the previous part out that I did of this set was more than we're doing now. I might actually look at see where that price is on the range in the six month average to see if it does need, you know, some sort of TLC. It's it takes a little bit more time to upload, but when you're doing a lot of sets at one time, you wanna not just throw the parts up there and see you know, you're just not throwing them against the wall to see if they stick. You want to think about it beforehand. I've definitely uploaded like a, a thousand parts for, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot less than they should be selling for. And they went like that. So just answering OBFD, he's like, is the coupon placed in the same area for desktop mobile? Yes, because BrickLink does not have a mobile version of their website. Yeah, fortunately. And it actually works very badly on my iPhone. It's kind of frustrating. Yeah, iPhones it actually performs the worst on. Yep. From what I understand. Most popular device doesn't work well on their website. <laughs> but yeah, maybe one of these days. I would love to see a BrickLink app. That'd be amazing. Oh yeah. 
So Renegade is going through the same process as everyone else is um, having difficulty finding space for everything. Yeah, running we have plenty out of, of space for our containers drawers, but we're constantly running out of containers. So you yep. just missed out on the sale that they had at um, Tractor Supply Company for the 18 drawer. Um, but if we find another one, we'll definitely put it out there. Um, best place to get, and I'm not, I might have stack ons, but I'm more of a proponent of acro mills because of the separation that they allow. Yeah. Dividers. But, um, you can always get a good price on stack ons over at uh, Mills Fleet Farm. And they have surprisingly good price for shipping, uh, especially on a high number of them. I think I, the, the, the price point, I guess, on shipping is somewhere between 14 and 18 where it goes from like $12, $14 to $30. So I think I shipped 16 of those things for like $12.95 shipping at one point. I was sold that's on great. it. Well, that's because they get freight shipping. Yeah, and they get the bulk rates. From yeah, they get that crazy rate. I've seen those crazy rates because when I ship to Amazon, I get their rate for shipping FedEx. I sent a 25-pound box for $7. <laughs> that's crazy. But um, Ted makes a good point here in the chat about dividing a drawer. Mm -hmm. I've actually done, I have Ecker Mills, and I've done a variation of what he says, which is put a piece of cardboard for a divider. I just cut up old Lego boxes. Yeah. It's free. You just take one, yeah, you just take one of the actual dividers, trace it, and cut it. Yeah, that's a lot of time, though, for me. That's true, but that's... Yeah. I, I, do, could, uh, I do a lot of weighing off of the, uh, yeah, yeah, I could do this, but no. I was thinking it was a little kid's activity. No. <laughs> Trace no. and cut. <laughs> no, nope, they're still not trustable age with scissors, really. Soon. <laughs> a couple years. A couple years. Well, the boy is. The girl is. The girl is just, she's wild. Um, I let Get her. I was, in, I was in here uh, with her opening up some boxes that had come in from Target. Um, and... Uh, just gave her the scissors and said, open these up. And I mean, she was just cutting the entire box like around instead of on the seams, just, just cutting to cut and <laughs> a little crazy. Uh, so they use acro mills and they also separate with smaller parts into baggies. I do do uh, parts in baggies, but I also do those baggies are in the sterilites. Yeah. I use I, I utilize a lot of sterilite container. I use a lot uh, I or I utilize a lot of um, inventory marked as just the word bagged, which would mean that no one could ever run my store if I died because there's probably a thousand lots where the location is bagged, and that's just because I know where it is in the store because things are that are in bagged are grouped in certain areas. I still have to go through and label out all of the boxes. I'm slowly but surely moving uh, the ex the adjacent drawer of items that are in bagged to a drawer nearby. It's like all the one by one plates are over in one section, and there's drawers near them that. So like my my uh, inventory is zero seven five seven A and bagged. <laughs> so I've got I've got a primary loc or I've got a primary location for quick you know if you want ten of them twenty of them fifty of them they're in that drawer I don't have to go and pull out the bag. So it's definitely sped things up a lot by doing that. But um, minifigures for me, we were talking about the how I basically part out my minifigures and you're doing a flip on a set. Total total opposite ends of the spectrum, which is a good comparison. But uh, mine are all in the mini Sterilite containers. What are you showing off? I thought you were I was going to say this. This is a complete set fig from Batman. Two inch by three inch bag. And you're not. You don't put the. Um, or did you save one checkout thing to sell with each, to send with each set? Um, I have them as well right here. Just in plastic cups. I'm going to send one with each complete set. And when I sell the individual figs, I'll send one with that. Then I'm going to recycle the rest when they all sell. Yeah. This is just paper. 
But yeah, I, um, <clears throat> I bag up all the figs unassembled when I, even I'm just selling the fig in my store. They're already pre-bagged in those little bags. So when I sell it, I just grab one, throw it in the order next. Yeah, I try not to assemble my figs anymore after I got like the email from that, you know, grandma slash Nana that was just like, the entire order was ruined because little Johnny couldn't put the fig together himself. And my own thought <laughs> is like, all right, first of all, grandma, like if you like you've got even if you're elder, like you've got faster eyes, you know, you know what you're looking for. Get your hand down there, pick it up if it if it happens to be like that. Not that it's coming from me that way anymore, but if it happens to be like that. Take it apart, even inside the bag, and hand it to little Johnny so the day is not ruined. You know, a lot of people do actually ship their figs and put their figs together assembled, um, and that's to keep the elements from scratching each other and marring. It's actually a better way of storing and shipping. Um, yeah. But because of that scenario with Nana and little Johnny, there's people that have actually gotten bad feedback, even though they've sent a complete fig, absolutely nothing was wrong, but the person on the receiving end didn't, when that occurred, didn't think quick enough. Um, and also didn't specify in the order, I'm sure, please make sure the fig isn't put together. Not to blame any buyer for anything, but clear communication is always good and nice to get. Yep, I only send the fig assembled if it comes that way. Yeah. And that's usually because they also come with a cape, and the cape looks like crap if you take it off. Yep. And also, you get the ones out of the books. Those are always assembled. Yeah. Like the little toy soldier that sold like hotcakes last Christmas for $20 each. Oh, yeah. I got that. And uh, to answer your question, Renegade, these are the shoe boxes right here. I use them. These are my battery boxes. It's from a book. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a few. Cool color, though. Yeah, Renegade, I use these. They're Sterilite shoe boxes. You can get them anywhere from 80 the cents to a dollar at Walmart, depending on if you get the value pack like these. This was a pack of five. And the trick on those as well is to get those when they're in the seasonal colors post-season because yep. they, they go on clearance even further. So, And that's also January. a good way uh, to color coordinate your stuff. If you actually are planning on having your shoe boxes and having, say, slopes in this, bricks in this, tiles in this, that's a really good way to do it. I think it was uh, Brick Vibe or something. That maybe it wasn't Brick Vibe. Um, there's a there's one of the very giant sellers um, that has it that way. Yeah, the seasonal colors. I'll be hitting those in January. Yeah, you are going to get a lot of red and green though. Um, fine. I <laughs> for my Sterilite, I grab them uh, right after going back to college because you actually get a really great selection with uh, with the post going back to college seasons because they try to. You get a whole mess of colors in there for you know, all the different colleges that all the different kitties are going off to. Great South Breaks is joining us. Yep, he's at home with a cold. Fun. So let's see. I actually just started um, when I get orders coming in that have, like, they buy the entire lot and it's a large lot, you know. Somebody just picked up all of these for me. Wow. I just, I pull them right out of the, like I, I usually grab a bag like that to make my estimates on shipping. And I just grab it now and pull it right out and leave it off to the side so I can not have it occupying and not have to go through it and past it if I'm filling another order that has parts from that drawer. So, how many people are going to get brick boxes on Thursday night? <laughs> You're looking at one of them. Yeah. I'm going to try to see if I can do it. Um, we're going to be in Pittsburgh with family for dinner. and I've got to get at least 50. And I'd prefer to get 150. <laughs> 
I'm going for 20 copies if I can make that happen. It's where I'm going to be, I have exactly one Walmart. So if I get 20, I'll be pretty happy with that. Well, I've got the I've got my personal commitment each year for uh, 50 boxes for one of the charities. So if I get 50, they go the first 50 go to the charity, and then after that, it's for me. So you gonna do any Duplo? No. No. And that's just because nothing against the Duplo. Duplo is actually, from my understanding, Duplo is a great thing to get into if you have the capacity for it and you don't mind sitting. Because Duplo goes for a pretty good price on the uniquer pieces. Um, but It's a long tail item. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a long, unless you're just going to flip a, flip the container. And that's an even longer wait than it would be to flip the brick box because those usually don't sell out for a while. But they're great if you're a builder. So if you're a city builder, a big builder, big scape uh, type of builder, or you want to build heavy, uh, those are great. Yeah, Renegade's asking, did it have a limit this year? I presume he means on a number of break boxes. I don't think so. Walmart's happy they, to take anybody's they, money. They never have. They never have. And sorry, uh, you you missed out. I gave uh, I gave Donnie, I gave ABC my old spots where I got my brick boxes. Um, so, sorry. <laughs> and Great South is saying, Duplo sits, but when it sells, it's good. Yeah, I yeah. agree. If you have the storage space, why not? It's like, it honestly is, like, I'm going to say it again, like, Chima is actually going absolutely wild for me right now. I probably have $50 <laughs> a week in Chima sales. So just just specific to the figs, because I can't even tell what's Chima in the store anymore. You can file that under things you thought you'd never say? <laughs> um, I sold 20 of the, like, during the last series, they had, like, it was like every single fig had the exact same red torso. And basically, like, the exact same red legs. They might have had, like, two or three different toe patterns in there. But you could tell that they were really not doing that many prints on that series because it might have been dying. Um, and Doc and I just started ripping the arms and legs off of all of those Chima figs from the last series because I think that one arm, or sorry, one hand sold more than the torso. So it made sense. Um, I think I've I sold like a lot of 20 and a lot of 25 of those stripped down torsos this week, as well as accompanying legs and then red arms and multicolored hands with that order. So somebody was reassembling at least the body and legs to that fig. Hmm. Speaking maybe of Chima. Maybe that's a big thing. Maybe people are arming up. I got two poly bags that I cannot get rid of. Oh, <laughs> I was hoping a completist was looking for them. I think I've got those in my store as well. <clears throat> I'm selling them as a pair on eBay, and I think I've had 20 views in nine months. Oh, God. It's crazy. Is there a lot of them on, on Amazon? Yeah, and they go for nothing. I'll eventually send on Amazon to get my money back if they don't sell. But. So PCB is saying that um, they didn't sell out of the uh, boxes. I don't know if they're referring to the brick boxes or the Duplos, um, but they were there for a few weeks after Black Friday. And that's... Wow. If they're talking about Duplo, I've seen that as well. Um, if they're talking about regular Lego boxes, then they they messed, they messed up. They, they personally messed up, and they should have gotten them themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I agree. Because they could be, they, uh, so Port City Bricks, I'm uh, not sure if you guys know, they have a Brickling store, but they also used to have a storefront. I'm not sure if they still have a physical storefront or not. If that happens again, Port City, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> drive up. I'll drive down. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not that far away. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, coming back from from Thanksgiving dinner in Pittsburgh, uh, on our way back to Hershey, I've got to stop by every Walmart along the way and see if I can get my 150. I checked; it was supposed to open at 6 p.m. I believe. Yeah, the, the one Walmart. I went. To, yeah, the one that I used to go to 
they opened their doors at like 4.30 and they would start checking out at around 5.30, 5.45. So they didn't care if you filled your card or anything. They were just, don't shoot anybody. Yeah, speaking of Black Friday, there wasn't anything special at Target. Like 25% off some stuff, but nothing exciting to me. Amazon seems to be pinging. There's a lot of, if you're looking for onesie twosies of sets, um, it's uh, you're good to go. If you're looking for mass quantity, it's going to be difficult. Yeah, Port City, let me know if you end up with extra. You can message me on Instagram, Fubrix. Um, I'd be happy to take them off your hands. Yeah. <laughs> and after sure if I don't, Big B will. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna be. Um, making a tour of Pennsylvania, not just my trip back. Uh, I've got family to see all over in Pennsylvania. So I'm going to be hitting up a lot of middle of nowhere Walmarts as well. I remember my father-in-law telling me that uh, he had gone to Walmart because he, he helped me part out the first brick boxes. And he had said, I don't see what the big deal is. You know, like I went to the Walmart near me and they still got like 35 of those things sitting on the floor. So he's got one of the ones where they actually start putting those things on clearance. Yeah, somebody in my lug found them for six fifty. Jesus. February. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, they, I mean, my uh, my local Walmart really not all that awesome. They uh, they had those Easter brick boxes, um, the ones that were going for like thirty five dollars. They still had them for thirty dollars in the store, and I told them like, "You guys are gonna have to put them down twenty to sell. You're gonna have to put them down twenty to sell." And uh, they finally had to put them down to twenty because National put them at twenty. <laughs> to answer your question, Hoosier, yes, it looks like you can buy them online starting at midnight. Um, it says all day online on the Friday ad for Walmart. Um, I imagine they're gonna go quick though. Yeah, there's going to be software involved by a lot of the big houses. Um, the people who you curse at because you see them, you saw them listed for like $105 when they stopped selling. And those are the people that, that are quick flipping them on Walmart as well. So. Yeah, Pumpkin, I'm with you. I'm outside of Atlanta and a lot of people hit the stores around me. You have to be quick here. Fortunately, I'll be in a small town for my brick boxes, so I'm not expecting too much trouble. Yeah. Um, I might even venture out to the next town ever, which is about a 40-minute drive each way away if I can't get what I want. But that will be determined in a few days. I had tried to. My wife had told me we were having Thanksgiving out of town and away from the father-in-law's place. I was like, all right, well, I'll figure it out, see how I can do, and see if I was like, this is a big chunk of sales. Like, the brick boxes are a big chunk of our sales because we do go huge on them. Um, and they attribute to a lot more than just sales of what was in the brick box. So there are a lot of ancillary sales based upon that. Yeah, I call the brick boxes my milk and bread. But I had... Uh, Everybody's got to have it. And then it, I said to her, I was like, yeah. well, we talked to your dad about putting a trailer on his truck and then you know, he can hit up this Walmart and I can hit up this Walmart. And she was like, no, you know... Mr. Sternlaw's entire family is going to be at the house. There's going to be like 30 people there. Nobody's going to be able to leave just to go get shopping in the middle of it. So. <laughs> and I'm not, I, I really don't like the idea of doing that and going out and having to go out even on Thanksgiving to make this happen. But unfortunately, I do. Yep, got to eat. Ah, uh, so they're gonna running aids going to uh, No Tax Oregon, which That's is nice. a great which is a great option if you're in the Pacific Northwest, is to hit up Oregon because they they got some good deals down there. I gotta tell you, I don't know any place though that was um, that was hoodie in Oregon though that you would really have this the same thing going on as I did. So the reason why my Walmart had let 
uh, people check out and go in early and load their carts and everything else. It's because they had had tramplings and assaults and stuff like that in that store previously. And that was the recommendation from basically corporate and their insurance carrier, which was just let people do stuff. Yeah, you're right. Pumpkin Delaware is good to hit with no sales tax, as is New Hampshire. Yes. Uh, just another Brick Life says the brick boxes are released a week earlier than in the U.S. I don't know where that is, though. They had they started advertising gonna... them a week beforehand, uh, and they advertised that the prices in store would be twenty dollars. But I don't believe that they ever put them in store anywhere, unless it was a mistake by the manager, which was lucky to the buyer. I'm guessing uh, Brick Life that it was released earlier in Canada because your Thanksgiving's earlier. Just throwing it out there. Um, oh. I'm not sure, but. It's not surprising. What is Obviously. a phase? What is a phase three Walmart? Yeah, I'm curious about that too. I think it's our first questions for the audience. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Going the other way. Shoot us with some more questions. Trying to see if there's anything that was missed. I think everybody's tired of hearing about my shoe boxes. <laughs> use actual shoe boxes. All right, let me see if we have any previous questions. Walmart only has four aisles of groceries is what a phase three is. Oh. I mean, I couldn't tell you what a phase one or two is either, so <laughs> apparently more familiar with it than I am. Uh, Xfinity would like to know is the create the world set 40256 available in the US? It was originally in UK only. I think, yeah, the entire create the world thing, including the cards that they have for the game, that's a that's a Europe only thing. I'm checking real quick just to see, but. No. And then, uh, I'm assuming this is in the wanted list selection. Uh, do you know why stores on Bricklink with no minimum price limit appear above the stores with one, even though stores with a limit have a cheaper price? That's probably, that's what I was talking about before. If this is with the wanted tool, that's one of the reasons why I don't like it. It's, it's all wonky. They have their, their sorting and their orders and their SQL query. As far as, it's all based on the SQL back end, but it doesn't look like they really tested it that well. Uh, what's the biggest BrickLink bill you've had? That was from a couple weeks ago. No comment. From Lego Snoop, the new rumored modular diner. What's our take? It'll sell. I'm not worried about it. I don't care if it's if it's or not, you know. I'm hoping it's for something kind of like a happy days ish diner. It looks like that'd it. be cool. But it also looks as though the photo could be a setup where it's just somebody else's yeah. modular that they built themselves and put all of the other Lego modulars next to it. So it's been done before as well. We'll find out in about a month and a half. Uh, kind of bear's vest, polar. Parting polar. out big sets. Um, yeah, I've parted out a few big sets. I'm not sure what you consider a big set. Um, I've done a city square. That was a pretty big one. And I've done, let's see, a few train sets. Those can get big. I think, uh, I think she's talking as far as... Uh, Modulars? Lots. Number of lots in there. And I have, you actually can uh, fall upon some of those um, Elb sets have, you know, 300 different lots in them. So. Yeah, she said, um, <clears throat> or he, she said, like, like the expert modular. Yeah, I've done, well, I was going to do Parisian restaurant. I haven't yet. I, I was going to do pet shop a while back because I had 20 of them. 
Um, I got five I'm, copies. I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> you had a horse more sealed, I think. They're worth a lot. They they really really went up a lot right away. Um, I mean, expert ones. I've made the mistake, or looking back, it could have been a mistake doing some of the um, ideas sets. Yeah. I think the fishing store is going to be a good one long term. I think that's so. modular. And I think that the uh, the other one that's uh, fishing related or nautical related just surpassed 10,000 as well. I think that one's got a good chance of being created. But uh, yeah, the, if those idea sets seem to do well in the aftermarket, but also do really, really well after they're taking off. Um, the NASA I parted, ones. I, 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 what's that? And the NASA ones. The NASA ones are, they're hot. You can't get yeah. them. But I parted out probably 20 of the uh, Back to the Future ones and can't believe how well that had done. Brick Five, five says he's going to part out 100 of the old shipping stores. You mean fishing store? Yeah. That's crazy. It's good parts in it. Yeah, he said there fishing is. store. Yeah, there um, is. There's really good rights. There's great parts there. All those sand green tiles. Parting 100 copies. Wow. That's going to take a minute. Talk about a big part out. Not for them. Yeah, I know. I bet you they'll have it done in three days. <laughs> three days. I wish I had a personal army to part out my stuff. You know, <laughs> it's employees, man. They got employees. They got peep. They're big. They're big. I I'd be curious if anybody you. parts out any Millennium Falcons, the big one, when they finally come back in stock. That'd be a heck of a part out. Somebody will. Somebody Somebody will. When they were um, when they were doing the uh, Bricklink did a thing where they they had uploaded all of the parts that were needed to build the UCS set. And there was, I'm sure, younger fans of LEGO that were going absolutely batshit crazy because I don't think they realized why they were doing this. They were doing it so people could put it back together. Um, yep. And they were like, what are you doing? You're encouraging people to part it out, man. <laughs> You're part of the bad system. I'm trying to find a part that I just added to the store yesterday. Um, I'm the only person in the world selling it. And I can't find it now. But I'm a big fan of uh, different hairs. So this was the... Uh, very colonial looking hair that they came out with in one of the uh, the bots from the new uh, Nexo Knights castle. You haven't done a lot of Nexo Knights yet. Um, it's on my list, but I have a lot of Star Wars in front of it so I need to get more gray. Yeah. So I just go for as many colors as possible, as much. I, I just try to shotgun blast it out there. Um, it took a long time for the shotgun blast approach to work with just parting out everything and not going for a certain type of buyer. But it's definitely worked out. And it's always I decided nice to look it up. We we have a question in the chat. Um, how many lots are in the new UCS Falcon? According to Bricklink, 685, but that sounds low. 685? I'm going to make sure I have the right set, though. Parts out for 2400 bucks, average. Yeah, that's it. Looking at the picture, that's the right one. Um, 7,671 items and 685 lots, according to the Bricklink. Surprise, I've already inventoried it. That's a massive inventory to do. My uh, my sales for 
Christmas related items have been going fairly well. Uh, one of the elements that I picked up two years ago, I picked up 500 of them. Um, people thought I was absolutely insane for picking up 500 of those elves hats, little caps. Yeah. That's, that's where the price pick was. Um, I've sold 200 of them already this year. And that's, that has, that's paid for more than the 500. Women on NASA set, yes, that is one of the hottest Lego sets right now. Yes, um, yes. They um, are supposed to show up at Barnes & Noble. I haven't seen any locals, though, for me. And they're also going to be a Toys R Us item. So yep. keep your eyes open for those. It's a great set for 25 bucks. Portsea Bricks is saying, throw, I'm going to throw something in our bag. Possibly the cabled mitt torso. I've happened to people have been wondering where I've been falling upon some things. And I have found out that there are stores on Bricklink that never open, that always remain in a closed state so that their prices do not show up on the price guide. But uh, if you've they've got a password bypass, so you can access their store and buy things. And they do this to sort of get around some laws in their country that I have to do with labor um, of when they can have their store open and closed if they have a physical storefront along with it. So it was pretty lucky that I fell upon these stores and um, it's been doing me quality since then. Wouldn't their um, some prices eventually show up in a six month history though? Yes, if they open. If they open, so even if they make as a soon sale, as they uh, open up, those prices, it's it's all you've got to. Are you familiar with how d databases work as far as yeah. the sequence? Okay, so for some reason with the coding, that is tied to something else. So it huh. just sits there and it waits and it waits and it waits and then as soon as the doors open, they've got then the clearance to go and then it sequences through. Interesting, because um, I'd be curious, you know, it seems like when database entry is made, there's a sale, regardless of the store is open or closed, it should be in the history, in my opinion. Right, it should be. But it's not. It's not. And you no. I, you would you would think that, because I've purchased from them and waited to see if my thing was in there. Interesting. So I guess that keeps it from skewing the numbers, which is good. Right, they still get billed by Bricklink on their on their numbers. It doesn't crush, and that's probably why it's written in there. Um, but it's done because that could be used for manipulation. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've been wondering about that. There's a couple stores. I wish you could actually physically block a store so that it did not show up in the price guide, because there's a couple few stores where. I've got to alter my prices because theirs are just so skyrocketed. And I'm sure everybody's seen them. I think there's one store in Portugal, um, another one in Thailand that just have ungodly prices. And they actually sell. I, I've checked these stores. Like They actually sell stuff. They've got feedback, and it's recent feedback. So, I guess you could set your price guide settings to, I know it's not perfect, but exclude the country. It's a pain, but it's doable. Could you, though? Could you exclude a specific country from your yeah, buying? Because while well, I'm looking at the price guide, I can say, show me only the prices from North America, for example. Right, right. Um, I thought you could drill it down by country and say, you know, show me an average it's set for Portugal. And then that would keep it, that would unskew it potentially. But um, I need to play with that some more. That's all API work. Speak, speaking of fun things I've bought lately from Bricklink, I got a ton of the minifig plates, base plates. Mm -hmm. Three cents each. 50 of them. That was a miss, Mark. <laughs> yeah. So I love it when people put stuff at the minimum available price. So that always helps me out in certain, certain parts. That, 
And that's why you should use Brickstock. Uh, so you avoid these problems. The misfire. Yeah. Brick, yeah. I can't, I mean, you've seen my videos. I can't say enough nice things about Brickstock. Oh, man. Um, it's, oh, uh, speaking of that, I don't think I mentioned this before. I actually got a, uh, an email a while back from a viewer who had heard me talking about how they, uh, Basically, if you use it, buy it. Yeah. I bought and it. they had actually, they went out and bought it and written the, uh, wrote the author that they specifically bought it because of. So that it was nice. Can't find them. I'm trying to find out who it was. That's a good strategy, Pumpkin. If you're trying to move used inventory quickly, is yeah, put it at the cheapest price in the USA if you're willing to go through the work of listing used, which, unless it's a set, it's a lot of work, in my opinion. Um, I'm in a process of using, to use my own term, reverse parting out um, Harry Potter. I got a bunch of it from a friend of mine who was trying to sell her Lego. She had all the Harry Potter sets, the shelf got knocked over, and smash. Oh. So she literally swept it into the box and said, here you go. <laughs> Problem is, some are old gray, some are new gray. And having to decipher that while digging through a big bin, not the funnest of jobs, but it's going to So are you going to pay well. attention to, um, to more than just color when doing that? Because if you have a range of where the grays split, you also have alternates. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to, I'm just parting it out in brick stock and then setting the quantities to zero once I find the part based on the color it says it should have. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm missing, I'll go back through and say, okay, maybe this part was actually dark gray as opposed to hey. dark bluish gray. And you can then upload from there as well to a wanted list. Now you yeah, have to that's create what I was going to do. Have, you have to, I believe you have to create the wanted list beforehand. Yeah. Or it goes the, to your default, yeah. Yeah, or get and get the IDs for it. Um, but you can do that as well. I mean, I can't say enough things about Brickstock. But yeah, that's that's the game plan. Um, have you seen? Because you've been you've dealt with the old grade and new grade changeover. Um, do they mix them in the sets? Do you know? Like, would they be part dark blue gray, part dark gray? Just I, bet, so I, I wasn't. Around, I was. I didn't do that. I'm. I'm I curious. Anyone in the chat knows too, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not that old. I'd just be curious if they, in sets, would have mixed the two at some point. Like half parts are dark gray, half are dark bluish gray, but it's the same set. That I don't know. I would think not. I thought we figured Lego would get rid of the old stuff and then trans cut it over like a clean cut, but maybe, maybe a lazy factory somewhere just threw in what they had. So Renegade is saying, uh, I see 1% sales all the time on stuff. Do you guys do that? If so, do you see an increase in sales because of it? I've never done um, any sales, to be honest. I used to do 1% on specific elements, but that was my personal way of tracking things um, because I was trying to avoid having my choice elements bought out by other sellers. And uh, I've eliminated the 1% thing. And if somebody comes in and buys me out of it, they get the the full clearance on it, the full, the full discount I stopped trying to micromanage it, I, I gave up. Um, plus, it's not fair. You know, I've gone, I've gotten plenty of great deals buying from other Brickling sellers. I should allow them to do the same for me. Yeah, I've done my share of buying out entire stores. Man, I got a reputation for doing that. I had to stop doing it. People got hard getting upset. <laughs> Why'd you buy? Which is interesting. Oh, cool <laughs> it's interesting stuff. because yeah. <laughs> I had everything on sale for eighty percent off, and you bought all the cool stuff that sells really easily. And now I've got all this stuff that's been in one hundred and fifty thousand different sets before. <laughs> Why'd you do that? Great sales brick says you can buy at my store. No way, man! I don't do that anymore. I'm right down the street from the Great South. I'll give you 20 cents on the dollar on six months average. Whole thing. I'll take it. But I did recently 
and I'm not going to use names because I know parties involved and I don't want anybody to get in trouble, but this is just a crazy concept. There is a store in Europe that is basing its shipping out of the United States. So they purchase brick from stores in the United States, ship it to their warehouse, ship it to their country in Europe, sort it, and then ship it back to that warehouse in the U.S. and ship it off to U.S. buyers from there. Seems like they could get sorters in the U.S. and save a whole lot of shipping. They do. All their, all their stuff is in Europa. Huh. And they're a huge seller. I would imagine so doing that. Like <laughs> It'd have to be. Big, 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 big. CKB is going to be the biggest store in Japan. Huge in Japan. Yes, he's on huge in Japan. It wrote itself, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just that whole concept of because they're and they they are one of the they're one of the uh, stores that actually bu actively buys out other stores. Um, but just to go through all of that, shipping it back to Europe and bringing it in. But then also when somebody from the U.S. and they're, they're listed as a U.S. seller because they ship out of the U.S. Hmm, Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. I guess they would collect the payment in U.S. dollars too because if you're paying euros, you're going to be like, hmm, wait a minute. <laughs> but um, I heard an interesting quote the other day saying the largest tire producer in the world is Lego. I did that one. And they haven't had any recalls. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> a lot of wrecks. Nobody died. Yep. I sold a lot of tires recently. That was one of my large orders. Yeah. So you took it. Uh, you did the, what I did, right? You found those someplace. Yep. Pick a brick. Same, same thing, right? Flipped right away. And it was to a local US, USA seller, which surprised me. I figured it would go to India or China or no, no, it's went to it, it's like some dude in California or something like that. Arizona, Arizona for you. All right. Yep. Yep. But uh, if y'all don't know what we're talking about, it's those the old school motorcycle tires, the flat ones, the little ones that now go on, um, I guess uh, skateboard, the bottom of uh, not skateboards. For me, it was the smooth ones. Yeah, completely smooth tire. They go on the little rims. Yeah, the very small rims. <coughs> that's a that's an item where people aren't looking for 5, 10, 20 of them. They're looking for, at a minimum, 2,500. And as soon as they see that 2,500, they buy them. And... Mm -hmm. I have found, and I'm really glad, uh, and thanks to Bricks for Chris for cluing me into this, because um, he knew I would sort of study it, um, and don't harsh on him then, him because he did Brick Vibe, but Brick Vibe knows going in that if they get to a certain number of items in the store, it's going to tip that, and those scales are there for almost every single element. Just we don't know they're there because we never get those limits that high. And I've slowly started to discover these over time that having, you know, less than a thousand or less than 2000 of an, of an item is a problem. And instead of my thinking being when I sell out of this, I need to get more. I've had to modify my, my thinking to be when I get less than like 2,500 of these, I need to go get more. And that's just, that's a whole nother world as far as planning out. I got to tell you. But those tires, yeah. prime example. I did well on that. Yeah, I told you you would, man. I told you you would. 4X. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's one of those things, you know, it's all about perspective. You think about it and you're like, man, these things never sell. And then all of a sudden. Until, boom, right. And it's like, why don't I have many friction pins in the store? Why don't I have a lot of these Technic pins, which everybody else is holding on to? It's because I just keep building up to them, and then all of a sudden, somebody buys 5,000 of them. So you got to think about that. Some of these parts that you think are dead, 
aren't really dead yet. You just don't have enough of them sitting around. I'd love for to see Technic pins on the pick a brick wall. Oh, man, let's go. I used to hate those things. I, I, they're, they're a great seller. They honestly are. Yep. I sell them usually a hundred or 200 at a time when I get an order. Mm-hmm. People used to wonder, um, why do you have a lot limit of a hundred on your friction pins? Cause they sell that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause they sell that way. There's, there's people that build with Technic. You don't realize that. <laughs> so, a lot all of right. great ball contraptions and stuff need that. Oh yeah, totally. All right. I'm going to call it. Uh, we're going to be trying to do this weekly. Um, I'm glad that Foo's hopping in each and every time. Um, Great South Bricks is a little sick and under the weather this week, but I'm trying to bring in a perspective of all different sorts of genres of seller, whether it be a small seller, a seller who primarily sells off of BrickLink and does a lot of quick flips, um, somebody who's in it for the long term, like I am. So maybe we'll be able to get what, like Yo Giant Store Brick Vibe to come in sometime, maybe. Um, <laughs> I'd also like to see if we could possibly get, you know, like person who is building for their hobby, but runs their store based upon different things. Because a lot of people that have a very successful um, builds as far as their personal builds and run their store well at the same time. So give me ideas of who you guys would like to see. Um, you got anything to say, Fu? Anything you want to, anything you want to hawk? No, just, if you need some stuff, foobricks.com is on BrickLink store. <laughs> Short and, and sweet. Uh, yeah, and I'm uh, I'm Big B Bricks. Uh, let's see. Oh, December 2nd. Oh, we'll be back before December 2nd. But uh, if you're trying to get that mindset, there's like three, four tickets left, and then we're offering a new one. Um, the other, the next raffle for the 100-ticket limited raffle will be the Forest Police Station, which does include... A grizzly bear. All right. That's it. That's all. See you next week. Uh, Sorry, I was pulling orders last week. Sorry.